Hi, I'm Juliet. Welcome back. And today's video is me showing you how I revamped my mailbox. This was a project I had in mind for a long time and I was really excited to be able to come up with it from scratch and execute it. And by the time I was done, I was so proud. So let me show you. So at the start, I compose an image that fit the feeling of my house. Sometimes I like to take ordinary things like a house and imagine like a parallel universe that I call the imaginary side of the world. And I use that side for my art because it's a little bit more magical, a little bit more interesting. In Stranger Things, it's the upside down with all the gruesome stuff. For me, it's the imaginary world where everything pops and shines a little brighter. The imaginary world of my house is very fairy-esque. The lawns of the yard are waterlogged and so mossy because the lawns are kind of sloped in an incline so all the rain collects. There's some big trees that shed a lot of leaves. One time during the fall, my friend said it looked like the music video of All Too Well, with all the colored leaves falling everywhere. So, I designed a postal elf who is sealing letters, and beside him, on the other side of the tree, a sleeping nymph. Hydrangeas all around, and bushes, and a tree hollow where some of the unread letters are stacked. It was quite a struggle imagining the poses of these two mythical creatures. I had never tried to draw someone lying down and still like I guess you can see the arm is underneath the fairy but who really knows. And the elf, God, don't get me started. Here you can see I almost wrote my address in the sketch. Um, don't want to be giving that away on the internet. I was going to divide this image actually in a half and have one side on the right side of the mailbox, the other on the left. But then I decided why they look so great together. It's nice when the elf is doing some busy work while the fairy is drowsing right beside him. I began, it was hard to begin, by taping the sketch below the mailbox so I had something to work from. And this is when I transferred the sketch or onto the mailbox. This is the most painful and disheartening part, I think, because angles are hard and it's boring and there's no color. It's just a bunch of gray, scratchy lines, hoping that you have the right proportions knowing that if you mess up, that's a big cost, and that's going to show up later on. But I worked, and I worked for maybe five hours, and during this time I observed a lot of neighbors, collected a lot of intel on them, which was pretty funny. And it was amazing how many oddball people and casual arguments and angry cars flew by. I definitely got irritated, and the bugs were annoying too. Like, why do bugs keep coming back when you just slapped at them? They need to know that they're not wanted. And it's always one place they come back to, like under your nose or by your right ear. It's weird. There was a point where I really wanted to quit because I felt like my art is the same as last year. There's not enough contrast. And I'm just repeating the same brushstrokes and nothing's getting better. But this is just typical resistance. And so I kept on working. And I got this, or I found this new paintbrush in my room that I hadn't known I had. And that really changed everything because it was an actual good paintbrush compared to the other really scraggly old ones I was using. That really revived me. By the end, I was so proud, but this was quickly replaced by an anxiety because the sky was gray and heavy and it was about to rain. And I knew that it would just wash all that paint away if I didn't get some sealer fast. So I frantically went to Lowe's and bought some and coated it on twice and I stood there with this little blue fan that you plug into your phone like a complete dork by the mailbox hoping it would dry faster. Then it was dinner time and I had to let it go so I went back inside 
and then it poured that night, all night. And when I went outside in the morning bracing myself, I was not crushed and not giddy like I thought I would end up being. I was just kind of in between. Some of the top part had splintered off, and it hurt a little bit that all my work wasn't preserved, but it shouldn't be horrible to repair if I ever want to, and for now it has kind of an old, chipped away look. And really the whole goal was to bring delight to my neighbors and passerby, because there's not enough color in my neighborhood, and I already accomplished that while I was painting it. So really worth it all around and I recommend.